In this lecture, we will learn how to drive bar element equation by using potential energy method. So first, I will define what is potential energy. Total potential energy is defined as the sum of the internal strain energy, U, and the potential energy of the external forces, omega, as given by the equation. So phi P is total potential energy which is equal to strain energy and potential energy of the external forces omega. We will evaluate internal strain energy and potential energy omega separately and then add them to find total potential energy in the coming slides. The strain energy of a bar is calculated by calculating the work done by the internal forces. The work done as we all know that is equal to force into displacement and this work done is actually strain energy. Consider a bar element on which a force is acting on the cross-sectional area A this bar has the length L and consider now a small differential element having three sides delta X, delta Y and delta Z. A force is acting on the phase delta Y, delta Z and you can see here the stress multiplied by the area is called a force in the X direction. If we multiply this force with the displacement due to this force, then we will get the work done. So this displacement due to this force is actually the change in the displacement x. So change in the length is actually equal to the original length multiply the strain. So, uh, we know that work done is equal to force into displacement and this work done is equal to strain energy. So, when we multiply the force, this is force which is equal to stress into area and multiply with the uh, displacement due to this force, we will get the strain energy. So we have this expression for strain energy and we know that if we multiply three sides of a cube, three sides are delta x, delta y and delta z. If we multiply them, we will get the volume of the differential element and we can write this equation of strain energy in this form and if we want to uh, calculate the strain energy for the whole bar we will integrate the above equation with respect to volume and with respect to epsilon x so we have this equation of strain energy for the whole bar and we know according to Hooke's law that sigma x is equal to e epsilon and this sigma x may be replaced by e epsilon and then we can find out the integral of uh, epsilon so uh, if we integrate epsilon x with respect to delta epsilon x we will get epsilon x square divided by 2 and where e is constant so uh, again using the Hooke's law we can replace e epsilon x with sigma x so we'll get the equation in this form 1 by 2 sigma x epsilon x so we can write the above equation of strain energy in this way and now we will uh, see that the area of this uh, bar element is uniform throughout and uh, the stress and strain are only changing in the x direction so area is 
uh, stresses and strains are not changing in y and z direction so we may write uh, the equation of strain energy in this way where we have separated the area from the delta x coordinate so we now need only to differentiate this equation with respect to x and this equation shows us the area under the stress strain curve now the second term in the total potential energy equation is the omega now we will calculate the omega which is potential energy of the external forces there are three types of forces acting on a bar element the first force which uh, is acting on this bar element is the body force body force is the weight of that uh, body and it is acting on the whole body and the work done by this body force is stored as a potential energy that is why a negative sign is placed with it the second force which is acting on this bar element is the surface force a pressure may be a uh, may be uh, called as a surface force and the potential energy due to surface force is uh, written here and the third type of force is acting on this bar element is nodal uh, nodal force and potential energy is calculated by this expression so as we know that phi p is the total potential energy is equal to strain energy plus omega omega is potential energy of the external forces so we have the expression for uh, strain energy and we when we uh, add these two terms so we get the equation for total potential energy in this form so we have now equation for uh, total potential energy and uh, we need to define the displacement uh, which is displacement due to the surface force and displacement due to the body force so we uh, define u u is the displacement function which is equal to n d matrices where n is shape function and n s is a shape function for surface and n is equal to n1 and n2 n1 and n2 are two shape functions uh, which can be calculated by uh, assuming a linear displacement function to represent axial displacement so this linear displacement function is used to evaluate the values of n1 and n2 by applying the boundary conditions so at x is equal to 0 if we put put in the value of x is equal to 0 we will get u1 is equal to a1 and if we put in the value of x is equal to l uh, that means at this point the second point we will get the value of u uh, a2 is equal to u2 minus u1 over l so if we back substitute the values of a1 and a2 into this linear displacement function we will get the equation for u in this form and we may write this equation of u which is linear displacement in the matrix form in this way so you may you can see that u is equal to n this part of the equation is called n and the second part of this equation is called d so u is equal to n d so next is we will define uh, as we know that the strain displacement relationship and we have uh, recently defined what is u linear displacement function and n is shape function where d is the displacement matrix and if we differentiate this u with respect to x we will get the strain so when we differentiate this u uh, equation 
we will get the uh, epsilon x in this form where d is the displacement matrix and this uh, uh, matrix this matrix is called b matrix b matrix is a gradient matrix now we have the stress strain relationship as we know that sigma x is equal to d into epsilon x matrices where d is uh, equal to d matrix e matrix where e is young's modulus of elasticity so uh, so uh, we have now equation for sigma x because we have replaced epsilon x with d matrix and d matrix so sigma x can be written as d into b into small d matrices so we have the equation for total potential energy and uh, here in this equation the nodal force multiplied by the nodal displacement may be and these two nodal forces can be replaced by a, a matrix where p is the uh, matrix um, um, nodal matrix of nodal forces and secondly we have placed uh, transpose on stress matrix and uh, displacement matrices this is done for proper multiplication of matrices that you will see in the coming slide and we all know that uh, we have already derived that that sigma x is equal to d b and small d matrices and epsilon x is equal to b matrix and to d matrix we, we will replace uh, these values into this equation we will place these values here and we will get the equation of total potential energy in this form in this equation this is a very long equation and we want to simplify this equation we know that this is uh, the no, uh, displacement uh, the potential energy due to the nodal force and this part is the potential energy due to the surface force and this is potential energy due to the body force we uh, may replace the these three forces by a single force matrix multiplied by the displacement matrix transpose and you can see here that now the equation is uh, has been simplified further for our convenience we may replace this part of this equation equal by a u star matrix and the explicit expression for this d transpose into f transpose matrices is u1 f1 x plus u2 f2 x so next uh, we will evaluate what is u star u star is multiplication of these five matrices so if we multiply these five matrices we will get the u star in this form in the next step we will minimize the total potential energy equation with respect to each nodal displacement and put it equal to zero this is a basic requirement of this poten uh, potential energy method in which we will uh, differentiate the total potential energy expression with respect to each displacement and put it equal to zero after simplification after simplification of these two equations we may write these two equations in the matrix form in this way where k is the stiffness matrix for a bar element uh, this is the same equation that we have derived earlier by a another method